and here we go again. This is Flash at In a Perfect World on Tuesday, 16th of July, 2019. I like saying it like that. Makes me feel superior to all you non whatever we are out there. And hey, Grimner, guess what? I'm still doing it alone, solo. And uh, apparently, Gr Vinny got me involved in some kind of project with uh, Chuck Ocelli. And I just seen about it on the internet last night. I haven't talked to anybody yet. So, hmm. But that's no way to introduce me to change you boneheads. Phone call would have been nice. And, uh, going to say hi to all the bots and bodies in the real liberty media.com chat that are hanging out for their intellectual and superiority complexes today yeah superiority complex well what a word anyway what do we got here we got barman beetle cowboy tech grimnir moose girl brackets dc anti asmo Beth Z, Free Enslaved, Graham Z, I B Don C, Java Doctor 2, Meister Brow, Ponder Kander, Miss Kate, Rob Works, Rome's Van White, Vinny, Weather Dork, Vinny went off with some girl earlier, so he's just logged on. Don't try to talk to Vinny, he won't be here. Uh, Phantom, and well then, that's... Mike in Salt Lake City in disguise. And we got a uh, uh, circle. Hello, honey. But she's not on. She's just knitting or crocheting or whatever you call that. And we got Cyborg, Noodle, Me, Frumped, Gromit, Huh, Jays, Nines, Jays, Kiss, Kiss, Underscore, Mmm, Prince, Ponsa, Sock Puppet, Smart Ass, and Van Meter. And those are your bites and bodies for your typing extravaganza here today in the reallibertymedia.com chat. Because that's where all the greatest thinking minds of the 20th century gather to try to figure out where we went fucking wrong. Because <laughs> we did something wrong and we ended up where we are and this wasn't my plan. Any of you people plan all this? <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to say... hmm. I would assume I'm live and on the radio today. And what I got up my mind, up my up my mind, up my sleeve, on my mind, yeah, oh, I fucked that one up, is uh, I was watching a link on Minds earlier today by that fellow Stephen, I don't know, what's his, how do you say his name, Molinex? I don't know if he's an American or a Frenchman or an Englishman or... I don't care if he's an alien man. Where he is from doesn't really matter, but he's uh, he did some narrative. And I heard one of the first things that I heard that really got my attention about how, hey, all this shit about the states right in front of your face. All you got to do is just click a button and look, and there it is. Well, today he was going a little, I don't know, weird. Uh kind of an authoritarian behavior about his outlook on this particular subject and that subject. And I know it changed from the, the way I understood the guy because I kind of judged him by what I, what I was listening to. And he was just reading a, a story. <laughs> so uh, there's a little more to life than meets the eye just uh, most of the time. So I'm going to post the story of your enslavement. And it says with subtitles, it's in English for those of you who can read. I'm working on it. Anyway, so I guess the point of it all is, I first heard this guy's voice because he did a narrative for this particular link that I posted in the reallibertymedia.com chat for your visual observation. And I heard him one way. And then over the years, I've heard him speak. Wow, what a disappointment. You know, it's like a presidential candidate. Once you sh get these guys off the monitor that they're reading, they're all this worthless. None of them speak worth a fuck. 
None of them have anything to say that's relevant to anything that's real. Billionaires' lifestyles and shit like that. I mean, it's great that we all want to be billionaires and rich and all that crap, but it, it distracts you from what you're doing in your life. <laughs> it's a paradox. And I think part of it was explained very well by this Stephen Mullinex guy that, I don't know, he started out on one side of the way, talking one way, and he's changed, I think. His demeanor, maybe he's... Uh, He's just had a slap in the face of reality, and, and he realizes that <laughs> all that work that he's done isn't going to change nothing. People are what they are. And just because you read about something on the internet or in a newspaper or see it in a movie or watch it on a fucking news program, that does not mean it's real. All that means is the people that own that information want you to know it. Similar to uh, how we acquire our our politicians. Take the POTUS, for example, right? I remember the first time that uh, I was aware there was a president. Because I didn't give a flunt until I was about 30 or so. I didn't give a shit about politics or politicians or nothing. None of that crap bothered me. And then I remember this Bill Clinton guy coming to the, the front. And I remember wondering, who the, Bill Clinton, who the hell is he? Oh, he's a governor from Arkansas. And then the further you dig into his hat history, that man's done more questionable shit with grown-ups than most of these pedophiles do with kids. <laughs> he's a, now Bill Clinton's got a story to tell. I, I can say that from what I've seen over my period of, of uh, hmm, observation. But I just remember how strange it was that all of a sudden everybody knew this guy's name. Who the fuck is he? I'd go, well, what about him? Well, he's running for president. So what What do you know about him? <laughs> there you go. What do we really know? We don't know fucking anything. We know what we're told. So with the story that you grab onto first is likely the one that your indoctrination is going to allow you to remember. And the truth will just, I don't know, slide on right on down the road with, you know, the rainwater. Because the last thing anybody wants to be bothered with in this life is the truth about anything. Lie to me. Donald Trump is going to build a wall. <laughs> They're going to storm Area 51. <laughs> Facebook. This has got to be a parody. Then I'm seeing links on Minds today about uh, what is the distraction of the... 400,000 people that's turned into like a million. A million Facebook users have pledged to storm Area 51. The one thing that nobody's ever kind of even touched is how are they going to get there? Where is the resources to support a million people going to that little podunk place in New Mexico? It's in New Mexico, right guys? Or is it Arizona? That is how far from the states I've, I've drifted. I think it's New Mexico. Anyway, it's the alien, secret alien, see this is what I mean, secret fucking alien space unit place. <laughs> if it's a secret, how are we talking about it? <laughs> you don't talk about secrets, you wonder about secrets. You marvel about secrets. Hey, look at the boobs on that girl. How the fuck does she walk standing up? But, I mean, the things that have our attention are really strange. But try paying attention to a set of boobs. Might make your day. I recommend the boobs for pleasure. Anyway. Uh, yes, Miss Kate, I is live. I tried to do that uh, now in Real Liberty Media. Did I change? I thought I changed everything. Let me take a look onto my meteor thing. <laughs> Meteor. My perfect world rocket broadcaster. And it says I'm broadcasting my little butt off right here. So I take it for what it says. Damn the torpedoes full speed ahead. Anyway, uh, so well, hmm. so we have this guy. I was talking about this Stephen guy. And how, how I noticed in his demeanor has changed. 
over the years. And he started out being narrative and inspiring and, and now he's condescending and demeaning and he's got opinions about shit that if you don't have my opinion, there's something wrong with you. And I just read that ugh, coming off him. But it doesn't stop me from appreciating what he freaking did in the first place that helped guide me towards the answers that I, I found that suited me. But there's got to be way more to this. This thing is so complicated. And it seems like it's hmm, very black and white, but I don't think it is. Uh, maybe the levels of participation and all that shit. Put that aside even, and you still have just being alive. Your requirements just for living in a, in a society where you communicate is horrible. You can't do it without money. And I don't, um, I understand how that all got started, and I understand why they've pushed it so hard, but it doesn't work. It's never worked. It's never gonna work. And the opposite of that is uh, <laughs> reality, which is there's no reason for 10 people to have all the fucking wealth. It just doesn't make any sense. But this is the better of two evils. Rather than everybody get a fair share of life, let's charge them for it. But we're going to make these people in charge of the big stuff. Uh, come on, doesn't work. It's never worked. It's never going to work. But we're going to keep doing it. Which leads me back to the story of your enslavement. Because depending on the light that you look on society in... Some people will say, oh, well, you got to work and you got to this and you got to that and you got to, got to, got to, got to, got to, got to, got to. Wait a minute. Why? Why do you have to? Well, because if you don't, you get punished for not got to, got to, got to, got to, got to. And we all know what that is. You know, you go to work, you pay your bills. Uh, I don't know. You don't shoot people in the face for being stupid. Things like that. You, you live a life. But it's a inexpensive freaking uh, society thing. Wow, what a price to pay. And beyond the money, I mean, you got no freedom, no privacy. At, at best, you have a little bit. But when the overall thing is said and done, people know. I'm sitting on a, I'm sitting on the street today. There's tables filled with people eating and I'm kind of like at the end of somebody else's table they joined my table because they were there was a bigger party of them so we're all just sitting together and uh, as I'm sitting there having my beers and smoking my cigarettes two different people stop at the uh, at the table to say hi to me so, <laughs> so it's gone from uh, Wow, I don't know. I guess now I'm just like a, a regular. <laughs> I'm a part of the damn uh, the lineup because the regulars and the local people, the people that work in this in the area, know me now. And now I've got even people going out of their way to, hey, how you doing today? And what the fuck is going on here? Because I come from anonymous land where the the last thing I really wanted was people paying attention to me. Leave me alone. Leave me have my beer and you just go the fuck away and leave me alone and well, I'll get along just fine because I'm just not a people person. And as I've aged, I think Sir kind of had a little hand in this too, soft, this softening up thing. Because, uh, good Lord, people are just impossible to please. So, rather than try, <laughs> I don't even give a shit. If, if I see that look, you know, that... that you don't please me look coming. If I feel people are even thinking it, ah, shut up. That's it. I'm done. And leave them to think whatever they want to think. Because as we've all learned in our life, <laughs> whatever you think is true is true. And if you look at the times in life that, you can prove that with the word faith, I guess. Like Vinny, Vinny's got that God faith stuff going on. We debate it a little, you know, we go around the edges because we don't want to get too personal about the God thing. But 
he doesn't make cl- make claims that he's a better guy than me because he sees the religious thing this way and I'm a wannabe Jew and I don't know this and I don't he doesn't do that. But what he does do I think is give people a an opportunity to be whatever the fuck they think they are. <laughs> and and he doesn't he doesn't always flaunt his judgments. Sometimes he keeps his mouth shut. Like whatever he has has to say about me, I never hear it back from other people unless it's positive. So the negative shit Vinny might have to say about or to me, he's pretty much said it to me himself. I didn't hear it from other people. And that's an important, that's a big, big thing to me. You know, uh, it's like the Grimm thing. Grimm runs a site, so we all got to be all egg, sh- you know, walking on eggshells and be all nice to him. And every once in a while, I just call him a grouchy old bastard just to let him know that he's just as important as the rest of us, you know. Just because you're stuck right in the freaking site doesn't mean you're you know, you're not part of the game. You're still part of it. You're just stuck with the title. <laughs> it's not your fault. But you're going to get, uh, as we all know, when, when you have a title, there's shit that goes with it that you may or might, may not want. And that, again, to the story of your enslavement. We've hmm. The way this guy describes the enslavement is... It's kind of incomplete in a lot of ways because he's, he's done it in like six and a half minutes, right? So what he had to do is try to figure out a way to narrate the beginning of time, how they figured out how to hurt us, and how they keep us hurting ourselves now. And we do. Oh, we're good at it. Some people uh, are really looking forward to the... I had to turn my TV down. Some people are, seem to be looking forward to the uh, shepherd positions in the... <laughs> <laughs> the upcoming apocalypse, <laughs> you know, oh, when, when the Great Reset starts and society ends, <laughs> uh, you can't end. You can't end this thing in violence. Actually, I believe violence is the thing that keeps the damn thing going. If you stopped all the freaking violence all at one time, what would the authority have to do? They're they're dependent on our collective stupidity. Our selfishness, deprivation, and greed. All that negative shit that they throw at us. <laughs> it's, it's brilliant. It's like that. Uh, uh, I seen a link yesterday about people that are coming from Central and South America to go to the United States are now claiming, not all of them, but a, a few of them, they're, they're hinting around on the sides now, that uh, they read the uh, information in the newspapers where they're from and saw it on the internet. Information, go to America, get a new start, blah, 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 blah. And I've been telling people for a long time, <laughs> that's how this works. Advertising, that's how anything works. I mean, they're not, it's not as... Um, as hidden as sight, like buying weed once was, you know, where, uh, hell, people didn't want to know who you got, <laughs> uh, how do you put that? Oh, if, if I had a friend that was selling something and somebody came to me, hey, can you get me something? I wouldn't just say, hey, yeah, go ask John, John will do it. I would say, hold on, you got any money? <laughs> I'll go get you some, you show me some money, I'll bring it back, you pay me when I get back. But if you're not familiar with that kind of, uh, I guess, protocols to uh, privacy, because not everybody wants to be uh, out in the public eye, recognized. <laughs> I didn't think I was until I got recognized out in the public and I thought, yeah, that's pretty cool. Because I'm the only one there that doesn't speak the damn language. And I'm, I'm, getting, you know, I'm getting attention from the locals. So it's great for the ego. Builds the self-esteem quite a bit, I think. Uh, especially considering where I'm, where I'm from, and uh, America is just different than this. It's not the same, uh, the same design. The inside of the bar is. Oh yeah, yeah. They were playing uh, liars dice on the on the bar, and I don't speak Danish, but I know liars dice when I see it. Fuck's sake, been playing it for 30, 40 years, and I just enjoyed the memories that they were bringing back to me watching them play. I was remembering old days that I, I've forgotten. 
I, I didn't think of them anymore. In this little game of dice, these Danish guys and, uh, and girls are playing. Re it just reminded me where I've been in life. and uh, Kind of cool to end up where I'm at and how things are after the start that I got. Oh, I don't know. I... Hmm. I guess there's some people in my past that would say, yeah, it sounds like something I would do to be in the situation I'm in now. And other people would say, I didn't think that he lived that long. <laughs> but going to make it to 60 if I hit September, people. So, today I'm trying to do an In a Perfect World solo about the story of in your enslavement as told by somebody that uh, I don't know how I like his, the point I'm trying to make about him is how could he start out so helpful and in the long run digress into a control freak that wants to tell you what's right and wrong because that's not the way I took this link I thought it was informative and hey have you ever looked at it like this and then the more I thought about it, the more <laughs> more wrong I was. That was the mentality I had to listen to it in. <laughs> but the guy telling the story, he's a freaking control freak. And I'm so unfamiliar, whatever the problem is, I don't I guess I just don't listen to people. I know you might find that hard to believe. You know, I do everything my wife tells me to do, and only a couple of things she tells me not to. <laughs> right, honey? <laughs> See, there you go. Uh, uh, so Frump is Moose Gerlin and Frump and Beetle and Cabot Tech are on the main feed of the RLM chat, just chatting it up. So, yeah, anyway, I was going to do my two o'clock show, but Cirque's been on vacation and I got, I got a little buzz last night, smoked a little bit. Then I thought, well, I've been up so long, I just stay up, but I didn't make it. <laughs> I sat down and watched a movie, and next thing I know, it's like 10 o'clock, and the show's over. <laughs> so, uh, But then I found out Vinny has uh, got some kind of plans for me to do a show with Chuck Acelli from uh, the Acelli, uh, what, what's the title? His, ah, I forgot his show name. But... He's got it on Channel 14 on Real Liberty Media. But he's he's been doing it for a while, too. He's based out of New Jersey. So all along, we've had all these like time zone problems. It's five, six hours later here than it is wherever you are, at least. If not more, something like Grimm's, like seven hours different. California's, I think, nine hours. Not sure. What time are you at, Cowboy Tech, right now? I got... Uh, in American, it's uh, 7 minutes to 7 p.m. On the 16th of July, 2019. Anybody ever wonder about that? You know, isn't it coincidental how the American Independence Declaration was signed in the month of July? How many of those guys were Jews? <laughs> We know there were Masons, but hey, can you be a Mason and a Jew at the same time? Huh? 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 Are there Masonary Jews to be considered in the mix? I don't know. But it's all part of this song. The story of the enslavement under the guise of you're free. No, you're not free. None of us have ever been free. The only time you're ever free is when you have absolutely no money don't know anybody and don't need anything. So nobody's ever going to be free because I think that's probably the the truest definition of free would be free of needing the shit around you that's bad for you. Because I got my own addictions to deal with, but I choose them. I pick and choose. And other people complain, oh, you smoke those nasty cigarettes. Oh, you smoke that nasty marijuana. Oh, you drink that nasty beer. Right, 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 right. Well, hmm. I guess I do the same thing, but just in different ways. Like, uh, I like to call adult, adult. And I'm not real big on looking down my nose at people, but when sometimes you just got to recognize adult, it's like it's like a sport. <laughs> it's like uh, like a train wreck, you know. Hey, how'd they get that 
guy's leg up. Whoa. <laughs> anyway, back to my epic tale about the story of our enslavement. It says your enslavement, but it wouldn't work on a solo. You need other people to herd you through this thing that we're, I don't even know what to call. Whatever this mess that we've come up with, it's fucked. We, as a collective, I'm telling you, people really suck some ass out there. You know that? All you dicks in power and you people with your fucking positions and your voices, it's a, it's a smoke screen so that they can just do whatever they want behind their backs and then they got these front men to bullshit us like a flint that water thing nine people were going to be tried and, and held accountable for the 12 dead from the water problem hmm. justice department decided they're not going to file any charges against these nine people why not they poisoned the freaking water they're i mean if you conspire to commit a crime or if you conspire to believe a theory People look down their nose at you, but when you poison the water supply of your, you know, <laughs> of your city where you're, they're supporting you to make decisions for them, and that's what you do to them. And you know what the average Joe's answer is, right? Put them in jail, lock them up. You know what that does? Nothing. You know what would work though? I've got a sneaking suspicion that. Teaching people the fucking truth from the start instead of this bullshit that we live in would change the game completely. But I don't seem to get a lot of support on this idea. It's a very lonely road to be on. Well, Cirque's with me on it. I think, uh, oh, maybe Grimner, maybe Rob Works, Vinny. Oh, maybe Frumped, Moose Girl, Beetle. There's a few. Cowboy Tech. You know, but to be honest, sometimes is uh wow, that's a nasty place to be. People go, oh, I just want the truth. And then you tell them the truth and then they say, shut the fuck up. I didn't want to know that. <laughs> so you can't win. <laughs> Try explaining to them that uh, there's no such thing as money. Money does not exist as we understand money. What they've done is they've changed all the definitions of the fucking words that explain money to suit the crime that they're committing. And you try telling somebody that, that's not on Real Liberty Media sometime. Or even a few people that are. You, know, you get argued with all day and all night. Ask how. The representation, 90, not, maybe 98, 99% of the time is always the flip-flop fucking exact opposite of what the truth is and maybe through the story they told you a few dates or maybe a few names that were true but the rest of it's crap oswald shot kennedy we went to the moon we're going back to the moon blah 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 and i wonder why and all i can keep coming up with is whatever they're really doing this is not as bad <laughs> So they want you to notice this shit so you'll not pay attention to that shit, whatever that shit is. And it all has these ties to the story of our enslavement because the way they do it legally, and they tell you this, they'll do it in writing anyway. I don't know if you can get anybody to verbally tell you, yeah, we fuck you with your implied consent every chance we get. Because uh, what implied consent is, is if they want to do something legally, and that particular idea would require a certain amount of consent, they just assume it. And if they don't tell you to, hey, look, we're going to assume your consent in this case, and you don't ever hear about it, well, how can you possibly stop it? <laughs> <laughs> and instead of this is what I mean, we're all it's all based on a bunch of double talk bullshit that if you tried to do that to a five year old, you would have a five year old crying in in a puddle of tears because you were treating them badly. But a grown up, <laughs> grown ups line up to be abused. 
They pay for the privilege. They thank people for searching them at airports. <laughs> I have not seen it, but I've heard it. Uh, I'm sure there's links on the interwebs to uh, prove just about anything you can imagine now. Yeah, but I'm really looking forward to his, uh, st storming Area 51. You know, the secret headquarters of uh, all the alien contact that the United States has ever had is in a secret place right in the middle of nowhere. That, wow, what a mess. What could they possibly know <laughs> beside that? We're still burning oil. <laughs> <laughs> Still arguing amongst ourselves about which form of battery is safer and cost effective. <laughs> so so they they just improve the trap every time. Instead of eliminating the trap, they just make the trap a different color. So you don't Oh look, they painted it. It's not a trap anymore. Now, instead of oil, now we'll, we'll use electricity. <laughs> it's not the same thing. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, but, yeah, it, it's the same fucking thing. <laughs> and then, of course, I'm one of those crazy fuckers that believes that hemp would cure all this shit. And there's a lot more reasons to it than just burning anything. There's the... it. It's good for the earth... For the hemp to grow on the earth. That is why it grows there. I, agree, I also agree with there. there's something wrong with removing the oil out of the ground in the amounts that they do it with and replace it with what? <laughs> Water? <laughs> so then they got all these earthquakes. and Well, think about it. All the mining and sucking and fracking and defracking and unfracking everybody's doing. <laughs> And they wonder why everything's uh, all, you know, screwed up and fucked up. Well, look at what you're doing. And then what you got is implied consent. And on top of that, then you got the followers' consent. My party knows what they're doing. You know, and I need this and I need that. And I need, I need, I need, I need. So <laughs> I took myself out of all, while I was living in all that, oil and gas and all. I'd walk to the freaking bars just to irritate people. That's how it started. Went, I'd rather walk than drive with you and listen to your freaking mouth. I'll see you later. <laughs> and here I am all these years down the road and uh, I've acquired a it started out as like a grudge thing at somebody else and it turned into, hey, I kind of like this. Because it's it's that time where I don't have to listen to other people. I don't got to do... I'm on autopilot going somewhere <laughs> with my little lists in my pockets for whatever errands I might be on. And uh, I don't know. I'm... <coughs> excuse me. Whoa. <coughs> I'm too, I'm too late. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> wow that was good but anyway where was I I don't think anybody's going to remember where I was after that one sorry I could not find the mic to grab my mute button I was moving my headphones and I forget this mic is so good I think it picks me up from the other room I'm not sure but Anyway, so how I, I you know, how I see the world and how other people see the world is pretty much day and night. I don't I don't very often uh, I don't very often find people I agree with on the majority of topics. There's always a, a like Grimner. Me and Grim have um, different ways of looking at how to trust other people. In my way of trusting people, I just expect them to be whatever they are. But I was kind of shown how to judge people's behavior in areas like that of danger or uh, criminal behavior. 
so I can judge that before I get involved with somebody. And that way I know, hey, you can't trust this fucking guy as far as you can throw him, but he's fun to drink with at the bar. Just don't ever bring him to your house because, you know, you're, he might steal your cat. Something like that. And so far, so good. I've been doing this for a long, long time and a married circle out of it all. So, you know, go figure when, when you're this opposite to somebody else, <laughs> it's just a strange world. But how do I how do I involve myself in in the enslavement? I suppose it's through uh, commerce because I did a lot of uh, sales work and I did a lot of artwork. But um, I think my contribution to the uh, to the enslavement was selling stuff, and I did a lot of what, petroleum hose equipment in the seventies, late seventies, and the early eighties tools, all, you name it, all these uh, necessities, tires, truck tires, uh, wow, tractor tires. Uh, and then when I got older, somebody had brought up to me, you know, about how petroleum damages the earth. Yeah, well, I still drove another 20, maybe 20 years after that. 30, 20, I drove till 2011. And before I finally took it serious enough to give up the driving part of the game so I haven't driven a car to this moment since 2011 and the last time I rode in a car was I think 14 we were here that was the first year me and Cirque had moved to uh, Freddytown no it was 15 the summer of 15 was the last time I'd rid I've ridden in a car and I do not miss it to this day. I know I tell you guys, but some days walking down the road and I hear the traffic and I'm just glad that I don't have to get gas and clean up a car and park it and lock it and worry about all the shit in it and da 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 all that crap that goes along with the car just so that I can do something 30 minutes quicker. It's, it, no, <clears throat> the amount of time isn't going to change my life. So I give up 30 minutes to be free of the responsibilities, you know, of uh, something I don't really want in the first place. But I did grow up with cars. So it's, it's kind of a, hmm, like a, a 180. I went from always having access to a car for most of my life to get those fucking things away from me and keep me away from them we we don't we don't mix anymore i like to look at them i like the you know the vintage cars rolling down the road i'll even grab a picture of them if i got my camera but driving no I'm finished with all that and i think that's subject to change because uh, as long as i'm where i'm at that serves that suits where we are now, something went wrong in Denmark, and me and Cirque had to escape and go move to, like, Argentina and live with the, the Hitlers, those nice German people down in South America. You know, something could go wrong. We'd have to leave the country. I don't know. I'm just saying. Huh? <laughs> the Hitlers. <laughs> Boy, is there anything in life that's real is what I'd like to know. And I mean it in the sense of the story, you know, the story of your enslavement. It explains the life that we live, but then there's, there's the motives behind it that are real, and then there's the motives behind it that you're told. And then, some reason or other, they never seem to mesh. They always, always seem to be missing each other as far as a good comparison. Uh -huh. it says Denmark has mass transit. Uh. Yeah, they do. They've got, but they're always working on this. They're see they they interrupt themselves with improvements too, and it throws off the the flow. So you might be jacked up using it time wise. And you know some people are a little bit more flexible than others. And I grew up in a, a place where I lived. I think it was like a. 12 minute drive to where where I my you know, where I worked 
one of my first real job and all that. And my dad still had a room in my in my dad's house if I wanted to use it. So there you go. And uh, I come from one of those families where money was not uh, no. Boy, if you went to reach for your pocket uh, to buy something in my father's company, uh, boy, you, no, that didn't work. He didn't like that. And it's a dying breed of guy anyway because uh, that's just the way he was. I don't know how to explain it. Just remember it about him is money. No, don't, don't show me any money. So all the years of my life that... Uh, I took friends home or whatever the fuck it was. Everybody got fed. Everybody had a place to sleep. Nobody got ever asked for any money about anything. But if you peed on that freaking toilet seat, we'd know who it was because you didn't know. And if you didn't know, it's because you hadn't been told. There you go. So, see, that's what I mean is uh, there's underlying laws within each structure, you know, and depending on where you're at, you're going to be accustomed to doing certain things a certain way. So when somebody new is brought into that and they don't know the rules, the outline, they show their self however they already are by fucking up the rules. <laughs> so if you have a sloppy person among you and everybody else knows except for the new guy, well, then you know who did it. And they call that what? Uh, what do they call that? Uh, kind of evidence when it uh, when it circumstantial see so vague in my mind I couldn't think of the fucking word but when circumstances are just ever so everybody looks guilty it's it's life you know you can't they put us in positions to judge other people on on subjects that we don't have any experience in so like if somebody's on trial for a murder and you're supposed to be a jury of that murderer's peers. Well, when did you commit murder to know if that guy committed murder or not? I, I'm I'm still stuck on a lot of this. Uh, I believe that you have to have some kind of experience in something to judge it correctly. Otherwise, you're just repeating what you've been told. No hands-on experience will usually end up in you know problems. Hand a guy a saw that's never used a saw before and count his fingers when he's finished. Because if you don't, because common sense does not always go with, hey, look at this, I got a jigsaw. Some people don't know how to handle tools, just instinctively. And then others of us, I don't know, maybe we got taught young. Uh, I got, Cirque's got a nephew, got a nephew by marriage. And his parents are real hands-on uh, and, and had him doing things when he was here 11 12 years old he'd come up hey can I have the axe yep sure I just sharpen it and give it to him without any question because the, his parents had raised him enough to where I knew if he asked me for something it was okay to give it to him that's why he was asking he wouldn't you know like a I guess one thing me and my brother would used to do is go behind one of the parents. The one parent was for it. The other one wasn't. We'd go to the one that was for it. <laughs> so they've eliminated that. So the kid doesn't have to do, go to somebody because he knows he'll get his way. He's trustworthy at, at 12 fucking years old, as I was. And uh, it's a lot of lost art. Most people are just lame. They need to be told. They need to be led they need to be shown and if you don't if you don't show them and lead them where are they going to do they've got no idea they, uh, so now i'm in this too and all my indoctrination it's there it's just not uh, i'm not as hard ass about how things have to be i guess yeah grim i'm live as can be muttering about my perspective on the story of our enslavement because it's a commerce it's a financial thing it's not about what we're taught slavery is where you mistreat people and hurt them and blah 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 blah, blah. this kind of slavery they give you the illusion of being over other slaves hey look at all these people you can bully and boss around and 
we'll give you a little house and here's some money to play with and all you got to do is keep these slaves in line and that's how it works it's no different than that no matter what business or what <laughs> what political party you belong to <coughs> maybe i should become a republican just to prove that uh, republicans suck <laughs> Would I suck ass as a Republican? Go Trump. <laughs> I don't know. I'd probably be trying to go, hey, you know, it'd be really cool is if Trump would run with Biden. Talk about the act of the century. Those two together. Instead of pitting them against each other, put them in a room together and make them work hand in hand. <laughs> Trump and Biden in 2020. Because you guys deserve... Best of the best of the best of the best. But all they got is Trump and <laughs> Biden and <laughs> Pelosi, <laughs> Mike Pence, <laughs> Bolton. <laughs> Good Lord. It's like it it's like a comedy menu. The the names of, of political figures on the world stage. They all they all make me just, I don't know, uncomfortable. So I get this uncomfortable amusement looking at these faces like <laughs> Merkel. <laughs> I was looking at the damn YouTube one day and I saw Paul McCartney with bass. And I thought, when did Angela Merkel learn to play bass? <laughs> Because McCartney has aged so badly, he's he's got Angela Merkel's face. <laughs> so, anyway, there you go. Or maybe I'm the one that's getting old, and I only noticed it because I'm old. We'll never figure all this shit out anyhow. But I had to, I was going off on something, and just that Merkel thing just distracted me. So what's going on? Oh, and well then, I bet Trump Pelosi would be more fun. Hey, that's a good idea, Mike. I think, yeah. But see, we're never going to get those kind of opportunities. You know, well, we've got Trump and Pelosi now, the way things are. But they're they're supposed to be arch enemies and blah, 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 do all that fighting crap. But what if they, <laughs> what if they couldn't? <laughs> like when... Donald Trump was a Democrat, and he loved them, them Hill, Hill Dog and Bill Clinton people. Boy, he couldn't find a better couple than Bill and Hillary. He loved them a long time. Now, he's sitting his fat ass in that fucking White House. <laughs> Hillary and Bill are older than dog shit. So now he can go public and go, I'd have never liked the bastard in the first place. Fuck him. He's he's a bad man. Oh, you he needs to be arrested. No, 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 no. And I, in my opinion, I don't think any of them are worth, they're not worth the attention of prison. I think the best way to clean up politics, shut down all the political offices for 24 hours and make those people walk in the streets that they're representing. <laughs> no, go, no, no armed guards, no guns, no money. <laughs> No, just constant surveillance so we can make sure they're not cheating. And, you know, watch them fight over a, a pizza box in a garbage can like other people do, you know, in the city where it's fun, <laughs> where everybody's dying to be, I suppose. I don't know where that one came from, but probably a mixture of the Slayman, Flint, Michigan water thing. I was thinking about that earlier. You're not even holding the people that are accountable. Are they're, they must maybe they're Jews because uh, they're pushing the Noahide laws right now in Congress, and Congress is about I don't know what 80 percent Jew or something like that. Half of them got <laughs> dual citizenship. That still cracks me up. I got single citizenship, and you know what I'm not going to do? <laughs> Support the government that I come from. No, I I don't think so. Uh, what if they did something good? I wonder if I'd support that. Hmm. I can't think of anything that the government is capable of doing. That comes into my list of good things in the first place. I think the only thing the government could do 
to uh, please me in any way, shape, or form is dissolve, disband, go away, oh, <laughs> stop, oh, leave me alone, I've had enough. But my peers, you know, the people that support the state, taxpayers, and the workers, and all those guys, they're the ones that are responsible for all this crap, all of it. The one I'm in, the one I came from, the one I may see in, in the future. You know, um, Just because I'm partial to a place, well, it kind of helps to like the person you live with, too. So, you know, uh, me and Cirque's getting along on a personal level might bring my, uh, my personal outlook, uh, how I see the, the outside world around me, might put it in a better perspective because I'm not a grouchy prick. When I go out and deal with the fucking Danes, because they treat me all right. And, uh, but where I'm from, wow, people were violent and moody and always looking for a thrill. I mean, on the weekends, there was always violence in the bars. I had to, like, avoid certain nights at the end of the time I was living in Jacksonville. Certain bars, I just avoid them at, on certain nights of the week because the military would come there and start trouble and be problems. You know, I mentioned this once or twice and the uh there was two military, two marines got into a little disagreement about $30. So the guy that owed the $30 got shot by the guy that he owed the $30 cuz he didn't pay him the $30. So he killed him. And that was just wow, that was like I guess 10 or 11, somewhere in there. I'm not sure what year it was. But, wow, what what happened to us? You know, murder for money. <laughs> money. Money that, uh, it's not real, but you can use it if you're allowed to. And I keep telling people that you can't do anything with money except explain where you got your fucking money. That's what the state wants to know. And when you try to spend it, what are you going to buy? If you have a million dollars, what are you going to buy with a million dollars? And how are you going to buy it? You're going to buy a car or a house or a what? And then who's going to, who's not going to say, okay, where'd you get the money? There you go. I found this box of money and it's mine. No, it's not. The state's going to grab that from you. They call it uh, asset forfeiture now. Because that money could be used in a crime. And Trump, sir, oh, man, he's all behind this asset forfeiture. You guys are, ooh, ooh, something's got to shift soon. Boy, I'll tell you, it doesn't shift. Well, they, it's 300 million of you. They've all, I wonder how many law enforcement agencies and operatives there are to physically get out there and, you know, put the chains and the guns in your face and take you away. So, you know, you've got that threat, but how many how many people are in a position to physically do it where it it's like a circle that is a rotation you know that in, in in and out in and out in and out there's so many people that they can do this to us now and i still say us although i've left the states but i got that american freaking passport it's magical i mean for fuck's sake you got to give the americans credit for one thing they are the bullies of the fucking world. And even my wife was saying the other day, well, I can get in places with my passport that you can't get to. Yeah, but for different reasons. <laughs> There's a few countries out there that hold America accountable for the shit they've done. And the rest of them don't want to be a victim, so they go along with, or they are, you know, participating in it with them in the first place. They're allies, so... It's a game. We're even me and Cirque will disagree about stuff. You know, it's just how how hard do you want to carry it around? Think about it all the time. As soon as it's over, man, I'm so old and moldy now. <laughs> as soon as the argument's over, I forgot what what it was about, and I'm already on the next thing. <laughs> I don't have time. I'm doing my best here, people. It's it's not easy being me. I tell you. You should try it sometime. Let's see. What do we got going on here on the RLM chat? Let's see. And Will says, damn, Grimner, I can't even buy a bump head 
replacement. What, bump hit? Is that that gun thing? Oh, no, he's talking about a grass gate. Wait a minute. Oh, they're talking about the electric components to trim stuff with. I got that confused with the, that bump stock thing, gun thing. Anyway, see, this is why I don't read the chat and communicate with you guys, because I always fuck it up. <laughs> the time set, you know, you're, I'm ahead of you on the, the, or you're ahead of me, or somebody's ahead of somebody on the, whatever it is. There's a delay on the radio, I think, and you'll hear me later than you'll type. There you go. If I said that right, I don't know. I'm so confused in life. What am I going to do? Because, you know, in a perfect world, I wouldn't be doing this alone. That was my Thursday night thing that I was going to do. So when Vinny decided to go all, you know, Air Force One and split, <laughs> I wasn't planning on that. So that now I've got two shows during the week instead of one. And I think to compensate, what I'll do is I have done an hour here. I think I'll do an hour and call it a show. Unless anybody wants got something interesting to be read or some reason for me to hang out a little longer. Because I completely butchered the flying shit out of trying to explain how I see this story of our enslavement as a reality. Because, uh, wow. It's so well disguised. It's disguised as society and religion and education. But all these things have, uh, ah, they have a forced mentality to them. And if you dare go against the grain on some things, education, politics, and religion, you will not be welcome there. They will get rid of you. That's the part they don't talk about is the exclusion of critical thinkers they don't want a critical thinker in a school or a, a place where of worship or a building where they make law are you out of your fucking mind that's where they need the followers and the place they get the followers from the poor and the people in the middle that are spending the money are just their tools the rich use the middle class and they scare the fuck out of them with the poor to keep them doing what they're doing so even if we like we boycotted, let's say 10 million people said, eh, I'm not going to buy Coke for three days. <coughs> and say 10 million people did. Would it really put enough of a dent in their collective plate to uh, get their attention? I, I don't even know. This, this game that we're in is so big. And it's, it's all based on debt and bullshit anyway. So I don't know. All I can say is I do what I do what I think is right for me, and then some things I don't give two flying fucks about them one way or the other. I don't know why, but there's certain topics that Circle try to bring up something to me, and whatever is in my head about it already, I got pre you know, my indoctrination will kick the shit out of yours because I've got my own set of preconceived ideas that work way faster. Then I'm, uh, I'm capable of identifying at the time. I just know, no, that's rubbing me raw. Blah, blah, blah. Don't want to know. Something else. <laughs> and there's no way to explain that to somebody else. You just go through whatever your version of that is at the time. And it's real easy to do. Just think about how much, <laughs> how much time have you spent on this planet. You know, and all the different... Like senses that we have smell, taste, touch, feel, blah, blah, that. And the things that remind you or activate your memory that are so invisible to your what you're used to seeing it with that you don't even notice it happened. And the next thing you're upset about something that somebody said about something that reminded you of something, blah, 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 blah. So, what, uh, in my opinion, what these freaking asshats and power figured out how to do categorize organize make little groups make lots and lots and lots of little groups and the smaller the group actually the better and you get a lot of them and you keep everybody arguing with each other about just stupid things that they can't prove to you period there's no physical way to prove certain ideas 
you just either accept the story you're hearing or you don't. And if you choose not to accept the story that you're hearing, whoa, then you're a freaking wacko uh, or a, what, a conspiracy theorist. They like to call us that. But I call it critical thinking. Even if you're critically thinking wrong, hey, at least you're not stuck in stupid. And just because everybody else is going to laugh at you, if you don't agree with this given knowledge, well, fuck them. That's what I think. But eh, it's not the way it really works, you know, because uh, we like to be combative, I think. I don't know. Um, we like to be right. I know I like to be right. I just don't think I am right. I think I've got an opinion about stuff. And fuck, it, it could be right for me and wrong for you. Uh, we're not taught how to balance properly, I don't think. You know, just, uh, hmm, what, how, how, what would be a good example? Like smoking pot. I love my marijuana. I love my cannabis, right? I am so fucking disgusted that they legalized it. It should not have been illegalized. It should not have been legalized. It should have been to stop the prohibition. All this legalization's done is shifted the fucking uh, gears. From now, it's not a matter of it's against the law to do this. Now, it's against the law to do that instead of this. Now, you can do this with our blessing. And if you sign the paper, and if we take your photograph and... You do it in the dispensary, and every, oh, hey, when is it fucking ever going to end? And then how do you trust, these are the people that are supplying you with fluoride. So, wow, look what they did to the freaking corn. Look what they're doing to wheat, Monsanto. You know, that's no longer Monsanto. Uh, hmm. So, by the time, whatever they're doing in, in this legalizing weed crap, their, their interest in it, It'll come out in 10 years. They did. They probably put some kind of freaking uh, shit in it. <laughs> That's what I think. I smoked some pot in uh, Freetown back in first year I was here. Because I was still, I loved my marijuana. And the hash is still to this day a little harsher. And I'm still, I'm used to the, the, the smooth weed and I've got the harsh hash. So, cough a little bit more. Uh, when I forget to mute <laughs> when I'm doing the show and so on. But uh, what I'm getting at is what I prefer and what's good for me, I don't think should be pushed on anyone. I think it should be a free choice. And that choice should be made with if you told the truth about what you're trying. You know, like, hey, here's a bag of heroin and a needle. You're going to get sick and throw up and you're going to feel like, but after about 15 or 20 minutes, you're going to feel better. <laughs> and then, uh, and that was from a hospital, by the way, I got uh, some kind of synthetic uh, heroin or something. I forget what they called it, but I had, my hernias were just about ready to explode on me and they'd finally diagnosed me uh, properly. So they had accepted yeah no he's in agony so they shot me up uh, with this needle and boy I was sick all the way back and blah 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 but the pain went away so this is uh, this is what's acceptable okay now what I would have preferred to have done was eat a couple of um, brownies or maybe a cocoa or something with a cannabis Something designed to, to uh, get me sleep. And instead what I got was I got a synthetic, um, some kind of uh, opiate. And just, man, it really fucked me up badly to make me uh, get my relief. The trip to the relief was way worse than uh, some brownies or a couple of joints would have been. Maybe five joints or six. Some, enough to pass out and sleep for a couple hours. But, uh, see, this is the, the reality I have. And then there's the reality that the state has. And the state goes with legal. They don't give a shit about what's good for us. They go with what's legal. And we're all sucked into this crap because we believe, as a collective, uh, that the uh, government's got our back. Uh, Mary and 
Grimner and Moose Girl and Hal and Vinny have been on these radio programs for years, longer than I've been. I've been just a scratch compared to these other people. And they've been saying the same fucking thing I say because we all agree on these things. And I have come to the decision. Ah, uh, thank you, sweetie. I got a lick sore from the wife. But I've come to the decision, I think, maybe temporarily, that, hmm, well, let me try to find a way. I got, I got distracted by Cirque with the T again and completely wiped out on that thought. But, well, eh, I, that's why I do radio in, in the living room. Wifeless. My, isn't that something when... Uh, it's not too bad when your wife can distract you. <laughs> it's when your wife can't distract you that you need to worry. That's when uh, when you can't get my attention, that's when things are bad. Not when you have my attention. Even if it's like, hey, you fucking idiot, blah, blah, blah. It's still something. And when I shut it off and, nah, I'm done talking to you. I don't really even want to throw a comment in. Then, then it's over. And uh, I try not to do that. But, you know, that's just the way I rolled in the Frasier. That's a whole nother joke. But, oh, we got Goober and we got Smartass and we got Cowboy Tech and, huh. <laughs> they're they're space shipping today. I think Goober's going to go space trucking. I don't know. Hmm. It's a big planet. So as far as leaving the planet, because the people on it are fucked up. No, no, there's more to it than that. I don't. I think it's the slavery thing, the lack of education. Not the crap we're called. We're we're taught that we're calling education is crap. It's nonsense. Bullshit. Doesn't doesn't help fucking anybody do anything except continue the shit we're doing. Now what we need is an end to the, what we're doing. But we're not going to get that. <laughs> Sorry, Grim. No meteor. No end of government. Just a, a continuation of the same old shit that we've always seen. And here we've got these radio podcasts and this internet web. And we can type to people instantly. Boom. Get our message out there. And the sad thing is that the people <laughs> that need to know don't give a fuck. And the people that do need to know and do care, they would already there. <laughs> this is it. It doesn't. It has so little to do with what we think it has to do with. And the way you're going to get the attention of the people that you want to control back would be through spending. And it would take such an effort. People would have to fucking think and talk to each other and get off their fucking cell phones and stop playing their little games like me. Stop playing my little games on the computer long enough to make some kind of plan <laughs> to do something. Now, my problem is I live in a place where I don't need to do anything. And the places that need something done, I don't live in those places. And the people that do live in those places, they're not listening to us. <laughs> they're slaves in the game. So so embedded in the game that, that they're not aware of, of what they are. They think they're free. And I laugh. It's at my nervous laugh because... At some point in my life, I was in that financial thing. I was trying to get there, and something stopped. And my life just went, and I don't know how to explain what happened. It just, finance just suddenly didn't look so appealing anymore. And I thought, nah, I'm going to try something else. So I just settled for getting by in life instead of greedy. <laughs> so... I guess I cash it in my greedy suit for a, a happy suit, and for the most part. I mean, it, it, when you don't base your uh, your happiness on your the quality of your shit, then you got to think about something else, like maybe your skills <laughs> or your talents, or if you're a freaking egomaniac, maybe your looks. But there's got to be something more to life, to uh, show yourself to others with than the things that you own. So I have made a lifetime's work of, of never having my name on, on anything. <coughs> I don't think I've signed anything to the house here. I don't remember signing anything. The only thing I signed 
uh, that I can remember is the uh, documents to Mary Cirque. But outside of that, uh, I don't play the game. Don't give a shit. Fuck them all. Can kiss my lily white ass. And, uh, but see, that's because I come from that background that I come from of, you know, your money's no good here. So that's the lifestyle that I do. I, I don't know how to put it. It sounds, I guess it sounds weirder than it truly is. But they got old saints, like water seeks its own level. So in matters of uh, finance and, you know, survival, I'm attracted and I attract people that are like me. So money's never been a problem. And if it's ever been a problem, it's because I wanted it to be. Because you can always downsize or go without something or whatever. You sacrifice. But uh, mm, I don't like to. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. It's a strange life. And if I valued myself, you know, in terms of dollars and cents, ew, that would make me feel, you know, like this uh, billionaire guy that's the big pedophile. Now nobody wants to be his friend anymore. <laughs> a month ago, everybody wanted to be his buddy. He was a billionaire flying to pedophile island, you know, banging all the 12-year-old girls and shit. But now that he, no, this state says, hey, Mr. Pedophile Guy. So all his billionaire buddies are going, I don't know this guy. I didn't like him when I, 15 years ago I said he was a piece of shit. <laughs> That's part of the slavery, people. Those people, in, in my opinion, are, they're on parade for us to see, like ponies, you know, like uh, dogs. And they do their little tricks, like Trump. He does his little tweets for our, our, our entertainment. <laughs> so we can laugh or follow or whatever part of the see all part of this trap that we're in because we think we're doing shit and we're not doing anything we're just doing what we're told and if you tried and tried living life without doing what you're told and at the very least you're going to get is people uh voicing an opinion about how lucky you are that you didn't get caught and wait a minute now in my mind's eye, I think living outside of the state is not a crime. I'm just living my life. So, I'm not on that wavelength of bringing the cops to me to go, Hey, what are you doing? The cops look at me and can't wait for me to get the fuck away from them. They want me to go away. Why? I don't know. They got and It's been like that since 1990, I think 98 or 99. Can't remember the exact year, but that's the pretty much when it stopped. I remember getting searched on a, on Sepulveda Boulevard, going home from a grocery store to my apartment, getting jacked up by undercover agents of the law. And on the way to my apartment after they let me go, I went, man, I ain't never doing this shit again with these fucking monkeys. I'm finished. That's it. That's all I remember thinking. That's all I remember doing about it, which is a decision. And there you go. And to this day... Just TSA. And TSA had me. I was a captive in their airplane thing. So there was no way around that. But fortunately, if even I have my controls, you know, if I'm given a task to do, and part of that task is you got to get from point A to point B. The, the thing you don't do on the way from A to B is cause trouble with the freaking idiots in uniforms with guns and badges. What that does, that slows down your trip from point A to point B. And it throws in, hey, look, we're going to take a stop over here <laughs> and interrupt your plans. And I was in a thing where I had to be in Copenhagen that night at a certain time and meet somebody. And by God, I wasn't going to let my personal feelings about having some strange guy wanting to you know, handle my balls interrupt it. And I'm not like that. I'm like, hey, get your fucking hands off me, bitch. Who the fuck do you... Th and get myself into trouble. But, <laughs> for whatever reason, and that was the, the day that I met Sir, uh, I guess that was the first time that I'd ever really gone out of my way, you know, to uh, consciously avoid a verbal confrontation with somebody 
but it hadn't happened in since 19, <laughs> 1998 in the first place. So here I am in 2014 thinking, well, yeah, it's kind of stupid to start up now after that nice run of no trouble. So I let it go. And now it doesn't even, man, I'd have to, I'd have to run out, slap somebody in the head with a brick to get the cops to pay attention to me. And, and I'm not going to do that in the first place. But that's what I mean. It's, it's so incidental at this point in life. And I don't think it's anything special about me. I just think that uh, the ability to see this for what it truly is <clears throat> puts you on a different, uh, a different level of interest with them. That's a way to, to explain what, you know, what I'm trying to tell you. And it comes down to Rob Works Vibrations, Larry Woods, the, the two guys that you know kind of got me into that direction and I see it more clearly I mean where I'm comfortable with it I don't need to read 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 and proof 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 nah fuck I'm too old for all that now now I either like an idea this is why I call proof I like the idea doesn't matter if it's true or not I like that I'm gonna believe that right just like um, if it was a religion or a government or a school you have to agree. If you don't agree, you got to go. And that's how the slavery thing works. If you dissent, if you, if, you, uh, if you try to change the system, the way the system runs, how it operates, they get rid of you in a heartbeat. Like that uh, that girl, the, oh, what's her fucking name? Al Alexandria or something. Uh, big, she's got a big long face, a lot of hair, uh, big eyes. Well, they kind of overdo the photography. But uh, Cirque was telling me she's anti-Israel. Well, there you go. Well, now I know why everybody's pissed and making fun of her. It, when you go against the Jews, they will fuck your life up. Even if she did say these things, the what they're doing is they're trying to distract you from anti-Israel to make it look like, oh, see, she's an Arab, blah, blah. She's pro this. She's No, she's anti-Israel. <laughs> Now I'm I'm done. I don't need to know anything more than that to understand why all of a sudden this little girl is in the public eye. She was a bartender. Now she's in Congress. Da, 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 da. Look what she's saying. Well, yeah. Look what they're not talking about what she's saying. The anti-Semitic shit. I had to hear that from my wife because I never saw any of that. I keep reading stuff, and I but I open a link to see see her actually on video. There's never anything. It's always type print about her, and never related to what the damn story is about. So, could be where I'm at. I don't know. Maybe I have to ask somebody on the uh, RLM to post something specific. Because these people, I'll tell you, if you ever got something you need to know, man, ask a question on reallibertymedia.com chat. And five nerds are going to come to you with an answer. And most of them are the same answer. It might be a little variation to a theme, but you get the truth out of these people. Just, you know, fluffing your egos a little bit, you uh, nerds out there with your skills, because you can do research. I'm not as good of a researcher, I don't think. Because I, I think I get, uh, I like the thing that I read, and then I stop and go, wow. Oh, Alexandria Occasional Cortex. Oh, you don't like her either, huh? Well, see, I don't like her or dislike her. I don't know. I've yet to hear her voice. I'm just going off what I've read and what I've heard. And when Cirque told me that she's anti-Israel, well, that, well, look what God, what, what they did to Gaddafi. <coughs> yeah, I know. Well, it had a little bit more uh, other layers to it. The petrodollar. Oh, trading gold for oil, little things like that kind of upset Israel maybe a little bit. And the Arabs are on a different, see, if they don't deal in the petrodollar, they're on a whole different banking system than the uh, West is. And the Americans had to drag them into the petrodollar. Da, da, da. It's all real complicated to explain, but it's very simple. It's you do it our way or we're going to bomb you in a fucking third world. And that's the end of it. And as you have probably noticed uh, Gaddafi is dead and his country is in shambles what was once a fucking nice place people were just like happy and it was clean and it was new and sparkly and this guy could drive through his 
uh, Peter, you know, through his uh, constituency in an open truck, and they were waving at him, and you know, they loved his ass. Now, what we got, if you drive one of our politicians through the street, the guy needs protection and, you know, bulletproof and this, that, and the other because, well, guess what they are? <laughs> yeah, so it turns out the tyrant in the Western eye is always, hey, he does for his people and says, fuck the Americans, fuck the Jews. And that right there gets you killed. For you cannot do these things in the public eye. You say fuck Israel and... You're never going to be anywhere in the public eye except for where this girl's at. So whatever her stands politically are, I don't give a fuck about any of that because politics is all a bunch of crap any fucking way. What I'm interested in, seriously, is that she's anti-Israel. Now I see how long she laughs being anti-Israel. I would say <laughs> she has a terrible accident you know, with a soda cracker or... I don't know. Maybe they'll just let her talk and, and just ignore her long enough till she goes away. Because we've still got the amount of people on Facebook and Twitter. That's where these people that have gone from mainstream. This is what they think, in my opinion. They've gone from mainstream. Now they're using Facebook and Twitter, so they're not mainstream anymore. It's different. You, you're not getting lied to on that like you do. <laughs> oh, yeah, you are. We're, we're, I think we're getting lied to about every fucking thing that we hear. 90, 95, 99, 100% bullshit, maybe. Certain things. Now, how, would, how does it operate if it's so fucked up? How do we get this out of it? And I think that goes to like Larry Woods and uh, the electricity is delivered on the wrong cycle. And I know Rob works. I always use the wrong words, but you always know what I'm talking about. So that's better than, you know, better than it was. But in the America, you got the 60s cycle. And then in Europe, you got 50. So my friend at the bar, that's an electrician that I don't usually call by name, uh, I said, he was talking about that. He said, yeah, we use the 50 in, over here on the cycle, and you use the 60. And I said, and they're both wrong. He says, yeah. He looks at me funny. He said, well, what do you, what do you uh, think, 54? And he didn't go any long, long drawn-out explanation, but I know he knew what that meant to Larry. They'd agreed on that without even meeting each other. That 54 cycle thing to an electrician is like uh, complimenting a girl on her boobs. You just, you know, that they love, no matter what they say, they, women's boobs are magical. <laughs> huh, honey? Ah, see? Anyway, but it's the same kind of thing. You can't go wrong uh, complimenting people with their, with what they already are or what they already have. And this connection to the electricity that some of these guys have. Don C's electrical. Rob works. Grimner a little bit. Well, Grimner more in the technical stuff, but I'm sure you could do some hands-on stuff if you, you know, if you needed a hand, you could follow the directions. And some people are just dead. They can't handle it. Or afraid of being shocked. Crap like that. And, yeah, me, I said, fuck Israel. Yeah, in America and Denmark and England, all this shit. It's to, you know, me, not to you guys. That's why I do the radio, because I get a chance to tell you how I feel about it. It doesn't mean it's going to change life or anything. It's just my opinion. But maybe there's other people out there that they harbor that opinion so deep down inside they don't even know they have it yet. Because indoctrination. You know, I've got mine. And is uh, because, I don't let me try to get across here. Well, I've got the wherewithal. As far as living outside of, you know, society. But I've got the wherewithal to uh, survive in society. Just, um, hmm. I don't embrace it like uh, some kind of, you know, lovey-dovey guy. I, I, keep, I keep society at arm's length, I think. This is what, what I'm trying to get at. And very few people are even, uh, hmm. 
I don't know. I don't vibrate on a, a level that interests a lot of people. So the few people that I get their attention to where there's communication is really, it's really small. And I've grown to appreciate that. I can sit in a crowded bar and on certain certain times, certain people aren't there. And just be sitting there. Just have my time to, to be alone. And still be a part of the world, but, you know, just from a spectator's view, not from participating in it. And last night I was watching them play Liar's Dice. And even though I, I can't speak the Danish numbers, you know, I, my mind just doesn't pick it up for some reason. But when they were, I, was, I knew what number they were calling. <laughs> and, how many, and at some points, how many, how many fives, how many fours, how many sixes, and some of it I would miss. So, Cirque said, you're going to pick up some of this whether you want to or not. And last night, I got to see with my own eyes. And the weird thing, she was, uh, she went, took Hannah to the city to go visit her mom. And uh, I was going to go out to the bar. She said, ah, I'll stay at my mom's tomorrow night. And, uh, you can go out to the bar and do whatever you want. And uh, about 9 o'clock, I said to myself, well, I've had about enough bar. I think I'm done. I want to go home. <laughs> wow, where did that come from? I don't, I don't usually say things like that. So, I did, and I actually forgot my cell phone, and then I, I beat Cirque home by 15 minutes. And this is how in touch, you know, how connected <laughs> with uh, life, you know. When we did this once on a, a New Year's Eve too, uh, I was celebrating with Kelly and. Kelly and me, ah, we couldn't get involved in the New Year's. It was just not what we wanted to do. So I, I'm going to go home. She said, I'm going to go home. And as soon as I get home, Cirque pops up online, and she, there she is. I thought you were out partying with your friends. I thought you were out. <laughs> well, there we are. And now we do this, and it's like normal. <laughs> Part of uh, the indoctrination into the marriage is, I guess, the similarities that you hold on to. And some of them are so vague, you hardly even notice them. But when you think about how difficult it is to find one of us when you want to, the odds are pretty slim. But when when we run into each other, <laughs> uh, when it's not supposed to happen, then I, I've started to wonder about how to look at these things. Instead of them being you know odd, now they're my normal. So I've replaced... Not being predictable to, oh, my wife's probably going to be coming home. I better get out of here and go home. <laughs> and 15, maybe 20 minutes after I got back, there she pulls in the driveway. And uh, I had a missed phone call on my phone. So, I, yeah, I was right. She did come home. But being uh, flexible enough and then to tolerate whatever the fuck happens, it doesn't, I'm not concerned about where she goes or what she does, that's her business. So for her to make a plan and then abruptly change it and then connect with me, that that's what the thing is about in the first place. That's why, I think that's why we got married, I guess. Because even can't even avoid each other. <laughs> she had gone to town and I had gone to a bar and both of us did abandon our plans and went, went home instead. Go figure. So, I can't count. Uh, I can't count the times in life that's happened. I can probably do it on fingers and toes, and most of them are with Sir. Uh, slavery thing. See, it all goes back. To <laughs> the indoctrination into me to be free has been interrupted by her. So, hmm, instead of uh, instead of complaining about, oh, I gave up my freedom. Blah, 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 blah. I just look at it like, well, I'm going to make my uh, my prison as comfortable as possible. Because if you, you're going to, whatever you do in life, you're going to have to do stuff. You can't just sit and not do anything ever. No, no, no. That's not how life works. But life has a funny way of matching you up with somebody that can tolerate the worst of you and also enjoy the best of you equally. Now, I didn't know that was possible. I thought 
everybody had always been trying to change me into something else. Oh, you're this. No, you're that. Eh, no, uh, well, this is what I am. You don't like it. I guess it's time for me to split. Because you were here already, and I don't want to stay here anymore. And I'm like that. I've been like that for a long fucking time. So, I think life just kind of balanced me out. I got, uh, I got an equal calm and an equal irrational. So, if I can stay in the calm and not ever get into the irrational, because you can stop it. You know, get your temper gets flared or whatever have you. We all know, like Woody, Woody's got a temper on him, but you got to keep your temper in check and use it when it's needed, not just use it because you can. You know, being a bully is a dead end road. But there's a time where, hey, somebody that's big and strong or forceful and bullyish comes in handy to help somebody else. Those things, I don't know. I don't, I'm so little, I don't really have much to worry about in that department. But I've got the ability to identify the people around me and figure out what their strengths are. <laughs> and there you go. Some people are troublemakers. Avoid the troublemaker. Some people are problem solvers. Pay attention to the problem solver. You know, like the the bartender. You know, I would have never in a million years thought, hey, this guy's an electrician. And the way that I, he brought it to me, he's telling me all about He's bragging about his job, something he did it that was really impressive and it made him feel good. And I thought, wow, this is, you know, so I'm getting more uh, hmm, acclimate. I'm acclimating to my environment, I think. You know, they're, they're welcoming me a little at a time, a little here, a little there, with seemingly unimportant things to me that are big stuff because I've had a lot of people tell me what they did for a living that I met through my wife. I don't remember their name. I don't remember what they did. I don't remember shit about them, but I know this bartender guy. And hmm, I don't know why I'm like that, but some people just, I don't know. They, it's not a good or a bad thing. They just don't stick in whatever memory I have. I can meet the same person four or five times and not really remember. <laughs> oh, we've been through this before. This is a rerun, isn't it? And then at some point where I get a little bit of comfort with whoever and I finally catch up. But I don't know. Most people are just uh, faces in the crowd. So the things that I'm concerned about are, you know, that five feet surrounding my body. And if you don't invade that space and you don't do anything stupid in, in my eyesight, my vision, everything's good. So there you have, there you have it. But I'm the one that gets to sight to decide what, what I feel is stupid or out of place. And the less attention I pay to other people, the smaller that list got. <laughs> so, you know, your dog's yapping. Your girlfriend wants to argue with you while, while you're walking down. The street. I don't give a fuck about what you're doing. It doesn't, it only involves me if it involves me. And I learned that I'm in control of that for myself. And then there's things you got to compromise on, but those are you know part of the slavery. That's why it's called in in this outlook that we're carrying. That's why we look at it and call it slavery, because you can't have that if you don't do this. Is you've been taught that's bargaining and well, okay. Well, what is the this that you're after, and what do you have to do to get it? So they take something like, well, you have to buy a home got to live inside and have plumbing and electricity and a car and insurance and god the list just never fucking ends by the time you start you're so far you're finished you can't go anywhere the best you're going to do in, in the level of life that we're living in is survive it period and some people eat steak and some people eat chicken or top ramen or whatever they do to survive they do and you do it according to your financial fucking status, I suppose. And then there's this other thing in life that takes you beyond all that. I don't know. I just see I see the world so uniquely compared to even my wife. I mean, we, we differ about some bonehead stuff that doesn't doesn't change the relationship, but it defines the people that are in it. <laughs> she's uh educated and well 
she claims not to be, but I mean, she's done enough of that learning stuff, the book thing, to acquire other people's knowledge. Me, I, I, other people's knowledge pretty much frightens me. When I look at the results of their fucking knowledge, and then I read something like Goober wants a spaceship to escape it, I think mm, there's something flawed about the knowledge. What could it be? Not get me out of here. It's, hmm, how can I identify this and save my own happy ass? <laughs> and I think finding the radio was uh, just a way to, to tell other people, hey, there is another way. Whatever that is, I can't tell you what it is. I just know it's there because I got one. And it's not popular. Ooh, man, people are not going to like it. The minute you say anything that goes against the grain, like this AOC girl, <laughs> now I'm getting it. Oh, she don't like Israel. And then there you go. You pick it. If you, if you don't like Israel, then you obviously you love the Arabs. No, why can't you dislike them both? How come you're anti-Semitic if you don't like the Jews, but you're sane if you don't like the Arabs? What's that about? <laughs> it's called scammed people. And, you know, you're not the only ones getting scammed. I'm getting scammed. You're getting scammed. The people in the game being used as the pawns to do all this exhibition shit they do, whatever it is. I've heard and read stuff that just made me freaking sick. But when Cirque went to Munich, what was that? Like two years ago, you went for like a weekend or something to Germany. Yeah, it was like two years ago. She was fine with going to Germany for a couple of days. Nothing traumatic happened. Germany was Germany. So the lesson that I think I learned is just like in America, they'll pick a specific law or a specific spot in a, in a law in that spot and pound it. Like the Chicago gun laws. What they don't necessarily talk about is the Chicago uh, population <laughs> and what the people are eating and drinking. Let's see. Flash. Pretty much everyone, regardless of... Oh, yeah. Rega okay. Let me read this correctly for you guys. Grimner says, Flash. Pretty much everyone, regardless of where they are, wants to be somewhere else. Yeah, I, I was there for forever, no matter where I was. And what's over there? Hey, I've never been to that place yet. And now I've been here for five, uh, I've been in Denmark for five years, but I've been in this little town for four. I, I don't even want to leave it. I'm just comfortable. I've never been this comfortable before, and I'm just getting older. So my wanderlust and all that getting and acquiring, fuck all that. doesn't matter to me. Give two shits about it. I think what, in, what ends up mattering at the end of my days here is how I treat the other people. And as long as I'm nice to them, they're nice to me back. And when they're, uh, today I went to the bar and Karsten was sitting up there and I usually sit way off by myself. And today I felt like going over and saying hi. And this is an example of why I prefer not to. I happen to pick the time when he has to do documentation, paperwork for his bar. And he says, yeah, it takes me two fucking hours. i got to do this documentation. I hate it. So I said, oh, well, I picked a bad time to sit down with you. Then I'll see you later. And I went outside and had my beers outside. But I guess the point I was trying to get to is when somebody's in a foul mood and they, you know, they're not there because they want to be, leave them alone. Give the guy his space. So I did. Excuse myself. Went outside. His day went on. My day went on. But his day went on badly because he had to go be a slave to the bar. And he didn't want it. He wanted to do something else. I probably wanted to go ride his bike or something. I think I said that to him and it didn't help. I said, oh, so you got you can't have a motorcycle riding day. You got to have a, a documentation day. And then his eyes went, uh, and I went, oh, I'm out of here. <laughs> so I, I guess he thought I was mocking him. I don't know. I'll talk to him later. I might not even been have anything to do with me. And it had only been, I have to go do the shitty job I don't like to do. Because <laughs> we all got that one little thing that no matter who, what what it is, it's the last thing in the world that you want to ever do. And you're the only one that can do it. <laughs> so, 
Hmm. Well, maybe not all of us. Uh, some people are blessed with stupidity. Like with the uh, Grimner with the computer thing. Boy, there was a, a period for months where I think Windows was messing with my system. And all of these things were just glitching and glotching and not connecting. And, oh, we, we tried Grim and we couldn't connect. And, oh, no, I got his voice but not mine. Ah. And weeks and weeks. And we tried switching me over to uh, Linux. No, I, I was worse on that than I am on Windows. But I guess with whatever you know instruction I got, whatever taken over the computer Grimner did, he got everything working to a point where I could operate it all by myself. Now there's still some you know technical stuff I've yet to get my fingers into, but I've gotten this far, and I don't think that uh, if I didn't want to, I could have. So I must want to. I'm just not as comfortable with this radio production stuff as other people are and I've been telling my wife for months and months and months I want to have you learn it that way I know I can trust you to tell me I'm doing it right but timing's been really bad so I'm gonna to have to finagle some kind of time getting my wife and Mr. Grimner together so that I can learn something <laughs> I'm gonna use my friends to get ahead in life see but the, the really the goal that's the way it would look in in some respect but the other side of it is I'm trying to unburden Grimm of a little bit of this button pushing he's tired of doing and learn how to do it for myself and because I'm the one doing the radio podcast not him but on the other hand he's the one that said hey you guys come on somebody do some radio and so I went oh okay I will sure because it's not that big a deal now, sometimes it's a little bit harder to uh, be comfortable with my ability to mesmerize you with great stories and input. And sometimes uh, I just roll. I don't know. Just a matter of mood, I think. And we're coming up. We got 20 minutes left of In a Perfect World on this here uh, Tuesday. I was supposed to do the show at 8 this morning, but I slept through the show. Thought I was going to stay awake, do an all-nighter like I did 30 years ago and just no doesn't work that way no more so <clears throat> we're gonna have uh, intermittent until sir goes back to work I don't know what <clears throat> what I'm gonna be doing at 8 in the morning but chances are my <clears throat> my eyes will be shut while I'm doing it <laughs> so uh, Tuesday the Tuesday podcast is gonna just happen whenever I can get to it uh, if I'm late I'm late <laughs> Um, today I didn't think anybody would care so I didn't say nothing about it and got somebody to tell me hey you didn't do a show today yeah. wow I'm kind of uh, that was what I was thinking was nah nobody would notice anyway that's what I told Cirque I was being all negative Nelly she says oh you didn't do a show nah uh, who's gonna you know oh who's gonna care <laughs> yeah I care don't <laughs> and then I get onto the RLM and one of the first things Miss Kate says, hey, I'm going to do a show. So, now that's kind of comforting. You know, I don't need all that you know, blubbering all over me from everybody. Just a couple of people so that, you know, like Vinny, so that I know I'm, I'm alive and people are, are paying attention. I don't think it's about the quantity so much as the quality of it. And, uh, well, some of the stuff that I have to say to people... Wow, it's kind of hard. I guess it would be hard to listen to if I was of the uh, other mindset. You know, if I wanted to support Trump and <laughs> all that kind of crap. I don't even know what it means. What What is supporting Trump means? You want war in foreign countries. Uh, I, you want the rich pay less taxes. Uh, why? People are stupid. and idiots. They, they think that if the rich are going to pay less, that they're going to, what? Well, who do you think is going to pay for it? <laughs> you need to check into fractional reserve banking and find out what your problem is. It's not money. The problem is the game. Hmm. No, Grimner, I'm not 25 anymore, but parts of me don't know it yet. You know, it's like my my body is aging, but my brain, sir, per, 
no, not all of it feels old. So there's still some of it still uh, reacts to shit. And then yeah, I got my old guy stuff that I, I guess I'm uh, hmm, I'm settling into, like the not being combative thing. That's all brand new. Watching people gamble on a BART <laughs> without getting involved in the gambling. That was the first time I'd ever done that, where somebody was gambling on the bar and it was okay and legal and all that shit. Or maybe it wasn't legal, but as eh, long as the law wasn't going to come, they weren't going to come in anyway, so don't worry about it. But uh, yeah, I'd usually play, and then last night I just wanted to watch. So what the fuck happened to me? Because an extra player is just an extra bit of money in the pot if you're gambling for money. Now, I think they were playing for shots. But I didn't want to do shots last night. No, 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 no. Uh, thank you very much, but I'll pass on that. The, boy, that alcohol stuff. You mix that with a little pot, you know what happens? You forget what day it is. Then you have this terrible like, desire to eat cookies. Shit like that. You're a threat and a menace to society. Everybody you know is in danger. So... I guess I can close it up. I, I could do a little. Um, oh, I didn't beg for money this week. Hey, anybody out there in Radio Land feeling generous? Uh, I've, I've got the link thing. I got so confused trying to repost it, Grimner. I don't know wh what to do with me. You know, I can do the one thing. Then you upgrade it to something else. That, and I, I, my mind just doesn't adjust to the changes very quickly. So I'd like to keep putting that link into my uh, the uh, feed the RLM link into my notes, but I can't figure out how to do it where it'll stay there properly. Yeah, I know my my learning disabilities will always be there. Ah, boo -hoo, boo -hoo. But this has been in a perfect world, and uh, yeah, well. W it's it's as perfect as I guess the person looking at it is capable of seeing it as. Uh, yeah, and you can see a perfect world where there isn't one. You know, there's always that side, that rose-colored glasses side of uh, a perfect world where the government's not hurting anybody, we're not at war, but those terrorists took that, blah, blah, and all that kind of shit. And then there's the other side of it where, hmm, who knows? Maybe nothing is going on. We're just being told stuff is going on. Planet's too big to see it all at once. So I just leave. I'll leave it up to all you professionals out there. <laughs> hmm. So what do we got? We got Tuesday. So tomorrow we got Wednesday and Fridays, seven o'clock on the East Coast. We got Graham Z in the Rocket Chair Podcast, seven p.m. East Coast Wednesday and Friday night. Now I'll be back on Thursday at 2 p.m. on the East Coast with 20% off. Now that's on purpose. This thing I'm doing on Tuesdays was with Vinny and it's very sporadic. Hard to explain. Ah, Friday night, 11 o'clock after Grammy's finished. 11 o'clock on the East Coast. You got Moose Girl and Grimner doing Breaker's Ball. Friday nights at 11 o'clock on the East Coast. Then uh, noon Saturday, I do the dork table, probably be with Vinny, and maybe I will get Mary. I'm hoping Mary will pop up again. And then Sunday, noon o'clock on, uh, I guess, the East Coast would be. We got Grimner pops up with the blues in the morning there, and uh, we play trivia in the afternoon. And then at 3 o'clock, Al Anthony comes out from behind the woodshed with a big old can of whoop-ass. Looking for crickets. And, oh, yeah, thanks, Grim. I just read that. No problem. I have my notes thing. Oh, good, because I tried to remember. You know, I can remember things for like five minutes. And then after that, <laughs> what? <laughs> Cirque. And Cirque didn't see it, so she's got no idea what the hell I'm talking about. So it's good to have you back me up like that, and that's what I mean. You're the you're the computer guy. You're already expecting me not to, to know shit, so you back me up, and uh, it's not embarrassing for me to not know. I just can't do this. I'm doing my best, and it's bad, <laughs> and I know that. 
but it's better than it used to be. So uh, Monday night, seven o'clock on the East Coast, you got Grim leftovers. That's where Grimner gets us with his leftovers from the Rieger's Ball. And I heard you live last night. I was awake through most of it, conscious through most of it. Seemed a little bit hmm emotional, Mr. Grimner, angry. It's like, uh, I guess the way to see it, how I'm trying to explain it, you see the world in a light that's very unique, sir. <laughs> a lot of people are get, not getting it. They're just, the state has them by the nads. Man. <laughs> and it makes us all crazy, I suppose, in the long run. Then next Tuesday, the goal is 8 o'clock in the morning in Denmark. Chances are I won't be awake. I don't know what time I'm going to do in a perfect world. But we're going to do it like that till Vinny gets back. We're going to post it for 8, and it's going to be as close to 8 as I can get. <laughs> that ought to be fun. Well, thanks, everybody. Over. Let me open my window a second. Close it properly. Over and.